I would like to say a few words about the goals and the mandate of the Brotherhood for the Revitalization of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada. Basically, we're on a mission to educate. I think back on the 2010 Sobor that happened in Winnipeg, and in particular at a moment in time when we were at the final banquet. We sat down at the table and we were introduced to our dinner companions and we discovered a nice elderly couple whose daughter had just been in the news making headlines in the music scene in Canada and somehow the word Chambazi came up. Chambazi is the name of a small town outside Geneva in Switzerland where the Ecumenical Patriarchate has its orthodox center. Chambazi is a diplomatic hive of activity internationally speaking and it's interesting that the Ecumenical Patriarchate has placed its so-called Orthodox center there. Obviously, the Ecumenical Patriarchate has its own political and diplomatic agendas that it needs to think of, and therefore the center is there. The topic of Shambhazi and the preconciliar meetings in advance of the holy and great ecumenical council of which the orthodox world hasn't seen one in a long time came up for discussion at the Sabor. And of course I was more than willing to jump in and start talking about the significance of the decisions regarding pan-Orthodoxy, the development of a single unified non-ethnic church in North America where churches are not going to be called the Ukrainian Orthodox or the Russian Orthodox or the Greek Orthodox but simply the Orthodox Church um, and the question is whether it will be called of Canada. Maybe it will simply be just the Orthodox Church, period. And the reaction from these people who were delegates from the central eparchy was totally unexpected. They waved their arms and said, no, don't tell us anything. And I said, why not? And they said, we don't want to know. They said, I'm not convincing you. I'm just sharing some facts with you. No, no, no. We don't want your facts. We don't want to be confused by facts. We are quite satisfied with what the priests tell us in church. I work for 30 years at the University of Toronto Library as a reference specialist. By now I'm the president of the Library Workers Union and I do have a library degree as well. I believe that the 21st century is the age of information. And to suddenly come face to face with people that say, don't confuse us with facts. I can understand when Farley Mowat, the great Canadian writer, says that he doesn't allow facts to interfere with a good story. But these are delegates that come to a sobor, delegates that have to vote on decisions that are going to affect the future, the destiny of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada. And they're basically saying, they don't want to be confused by facts. I basically decided that it was time to just enjoy my 
dinner, but another delegate from the Eastern Eparchy at the table tried several times more to engage the couple from the Central Eparchy in a discussion and um, she was very politely rebuffed three or four times and then dinner was over. Whether we can convince all of the people, all of the faithful of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada to look at the facts, but we do hope to at least convince some of the people and create a bit of momentum so that people will begin to look at the facts and decide for themselves and maybe for the future of the church which direction we intend to go. Following the Sobor, the agenda of Shambhazi proceeded. Actually, at the Sobor, I asked Vladika Yuri, I said, there is a lot of concern, especially amongst those delegates which I know best. What is the ramification for the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada based on the Shambhazi decisions. If you could clarify, if you could explain to us how we will be affected and how in all of this we will be able to preserve our identity as Ukrainians, as Canadians, as Orthodox Christians. Ladika Yuri magnanimously said that he will personally protect our Ukrainian interests. And I wanted to respond, Vladeko. May God grant you many years, but we are all mortal, and I cannot take that promise to be one that I would like to place any bets on. And considering what has happened since that Sobor, considering the letter that Vladeka Yuri wrote about disallowing the faithful of the UOCC to even meet or be in the presence of the Patriarch of Kiev, I certainly see that the promises that were made or the vows that that were made at the Sobor that they have been broken. And it is important to understand that as this assembly of canonical Orthodox bishops that has been created in North America and Central America and all of our hierarchs are members of this assembly. And the goals of that assembly are to create one non-ethnic global pan-Orthodox church that we have to speak up and say, is this indeed the direction that we want to be going in? And we won't be able to make that decision if we don't know the facts. And this is a decision that is affecting the decision of the hierarchs, is affecting not only the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, but every other Orthodox Church in Canada. I have had communication with the Serbs, and recently the Serbian Patriarchate took individual parishes to court in Canada to make sure that the parishes stay under the administration of the bishops. And I would doubt that the Serbian Patriarchate would be willing to transfer these parishes to a new entity that is being postulated by the Assembly of Bishops after it had spent money to gain control of these parishes in Canada, money that they spent on lawyers on court costs. Even 
interviews of bishops on the Assembly's website indicate that there are concerns, that the bishops themselves do not realize what is the best plan for the future. Is it to create a new local church for North America, or at least for the United States? Or is this simply going to be another metropolia of the ecumenical patriarchate? Because administratively, legally, financially, politically, these are two different approaches. In one case, we're creating a completely new entity that will be autocephalous. In another case, we are creating a greater ecumenical patriarchy. And I think that that is basically what the ecumenical patriarch expects to happen, that we're creating a new eparchy, a new metropolitan, a new exarchate, or however you want to call it, on the territories of North America. But these bishops that are trying to figure out what they should do admit themselves that the various mother churches, the Serbs, the Bulgarians, the Romanians, etc., have a vested interest in their diasporan parishes. The parishes in North America tend to be richer, and there are real estate issues, asset issues, that those churches want to control. And the bishops also realize that those so-called mother churches in Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania, etc. are not free to make some of these political decisions on their own. There is an interest, a vested interest, in the local governments, in the Serbian, Bulgarian, Romanian governments, to maintain control of these parishes in North America, in Canada. Because through the church, they will be able to influence and have some leverage with their fellow people, with their fellow Serbs, fellow Bulgarians, Romanians, with their expatriates, with their so-called diaspora. And the Bulgarian government has most specifically, especially in Europe, creating uh, a new cathedral, I believe, in Portugal, where they have specifically said this is the being done to maintain the cultural and ethnic connections between the diaspora and their and the people's ancestral homeland. Basically, we are trying to do the same thing. We are trying to educate our people that what is good for the Greeks, the Russians, Bulgarians, Romanians, Serbs, etc. is just as good for the Ukrainians.